Oh boy, Jump Force. In a little over a month, the game meant to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Weekly Shonen Jump will be released. And so far, it's been pretty much a disappointment. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Master King JC of the Annie Gaming Nexus. And I want to ramble a bit about Jump Force. So I haven't touched on Jump Force very much. And like everyone else, I was excited when this game was initially announced. Bandai and Namco went above and beyond at E3 2018, where they revealed a trailer during the Microsoft conference. And since then, we've gotten a steady release of reveals, a steady release of new info, and a steady release of all the features that are going to be in the game. But we've also had a steady release, or should I say a huge release, of information drought. There have been weeks where no new information has been released, where Ben Nanako has been radio silent, and the fan base has had to go to Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, other social media platforms just to get some little bit of information from the people running the social media outlets. Jump Festa came and went, and not a single new reveal was given. Prior to Jump Force, we had Deku, Asta, Boa Hancock, Trunks, and Renji revealed before the event even started. But at Jump Force, the main stage for Shonen Jump, for weekly Shonen Jump, for Shueisha's Jump properties, there was no new information. No new trailers revealed, no new tidbits, and it just came and went. The game comes out in three weeks, a little over three weeks, and we are here waiting to get a roster that can be on par with J-Stars. J-Stars was rigged with many issues from its gameplay to the graphic design to just the level of content in it. One thing you can't say bad about that game was that it was a celebratory game for an anniversary. You had characters you knew of, characters you didn't know of. You had unexpected inclusions, whether you liked it or not. The game had a representation of all 45 years of Jump at that point. 50 years is a big deal. And yet we are still missing key characters like Kankichi Ryotsu from Koshikami. We are missing characters from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure still. Where's Jotaro? Where's Dio? Where's Jonathan? Where's Joseph? We're missing characters from Kanikuman. We're missing characters from Gintama. We're missing characters from Reborn. We are missing fundamental characters that have added to the Jump legacy. And it doesn't matter if you are familiar with these franchises or not, you would want an anniversary game to represent this long-lasting legacy. It astounds me how little we actually know about the story. And yes, the story for these type of anime games is usually underwhelming. It would help to give us more insight onto what we can expect. Yet Ben Nanko wants us to pre-order so many collections of the game on a level of money ringing I haven't seen since EA and Ubisoft and fucking Activision. You have a collector's edition which costs $260, yet they want us to do that and buy a season pass and an ultimate edition and a digital edition. And they want us to give them money before we know for sure how large the roster is going to be. Right now, the roster hasn't even eclipsed 40 characters. At the time of this recording, the roster has not eclipsed 40 characters. If we compare the rate of time for J-Stars, right before its release, a month before its release, we still had a lot of characters being revealed on a weekly basis. And I am still interested in the game, but my excitement has dulled immensely. My hype has dulled immensely. Their marketing strategy is not effective for this type of game on this type of caliber. How many people know Jump Force is coming out? 
how many people are aware it's coming out? It boggles the mind. It boggles me to the core. And I've had issues with Bandai Namco's tr trashy marketing. Did they spend all their marketing budget for E3 last year? Because that is insane. How do we go droughts about character reveals? How do we have to rely on leaks to get info on new characters coming? I have no hope that we're going to get a big reveal. Because if this game comes out soon and we're going to get some characters revealed, why are people hold on to hope that there's going to be a huge plethora of characters to come out? And there's some info that's been leaking saying, oh, we're going to get 12 characters, we're going to get 24 characters, 22, uh, 30, blah, 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 blah. Listen, that's beyond the point. The fact that we have to do roundabout ways to get this information rather than get these reveals from the main source, from the company itself, is a big issue. Jump Force could have been, it probably can still be, but right now, as of right now, it is not the game we were promised. And the character creation is tacked on. I don't know if anyone knows this, but the character creation aspect feels completely tacked on trying to replicate the success of Xenoverse. And I don't know if this is the direction Ben and Echo wants to go, if they want to become a games as a service company, if they want to monetize their games, if they want to get as much money as possible from the consumer. But that's not why I was initially excited for this game. I still hold up a little bit of hope, but for the time being, I'm disappointed. Now, if you guys have any different opinions about this, please comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are because I'm still gonna be talking about Jump Force and there's still a lot I still want to cover. But at the moment, the game just hasn't lived to the hype just yet. Anyway, this has been Masking Your Sea of the Anti-Gaming Nexus. I'll see you guys in the next video.